Hello and welcome back to my man cave. I'm your host, Not An Expert, which is the name of my channel. And today in the Lead Pro 1000, we'll be going over how to take one of the most irritating parts of the Lead Pro 1000, the primer tray, and making it a joy to use instead of a pain to use. So I'll bring you in farther with the camera and we'll go from there. Okay, now we're at one of the most annoying parts that people find very frustrating loading the primer tray onto the primer chute here. Lee instructions say you're supposed to take a pencil like this, very carefully hold it like this, get it in there, and remove, remove it like that. And if everything goes well, it's hunky-dory, that's fine. Um, I like to, um, when I'm done at the end of the day, take all my primers out of there. That's pretty tough doing this method. And you got to be able to capture them here and bring them up, and you still have all the ones in the chute here. Also, another common problem is when you're putting this tray back on and off, is this will spring apart a lot of times on you. And you can see how it split there, and all of the primers tripped over on you, and now you can't even get it closed. First thing you see that we have to fix before we can go any farther is you don't want this three parts springing apart and dropping primers all over the place and getting them bent up. So somebody on the internet said to come up with a, just to get a, one of these chicken banders, put it on there and tighten it up around there to keep it from popping open. I had already made one out of a piece of black band, so this one fits on there and hopefully I can get it on there and yeah, you can see. So now if I ever need to take that one off, that's tight enough to hold it together, and I can pop it on and off. So that one's work, been working out fine for me. Okay, the fix for your tray shouldn't cost you more than a dollar in parts, if that. You start out with the, um, here's the tray with the primers in. You can set that off to the side. Here's the plastic cover. You can see I drilled a hole in there. The hole is 964th of a diameter drill. It's um, three quarters of an inch up from the bottom, and it's one quarter of an inch over to the center of that drill. And always drill plastic slowly. If you drill plastic too quickly, it'll crack on you, and then you need a new part. The next piece you'll need is this is 0 0.015 thick piece of stainless steel, and I just found this off a scrap pile somewhere. It doesn't have to be stainless steel. It can be any kind of steel you want. Hopefully something that won't rust on you. And here are the dimensions. It's 0 0.015 thick. This part is one inch long. The tab on it is a quarter inch over in a 90 degree bend. Flipping it up this way, we have a 964th diameter drill hole here through it that's one eighth inch this way and centered. The material itself is three eighths of an inch wide and you'll need one six thirty second of a nut and you'll need a six thirty second of a screw with a total overall length uh, from end to end of five sixteenths and um, then after you assemble it you put one drop of th third thread locker on it and otherwise it's just gonna the screw will vibrate loose on you and if you use a blue one it's a removable one if you use a red, the red colored one, it's usually permanent. So I'll give you, a, give me a second here, I'll put it together and I'll show you the end result. Okay, so this is what it looks like all assembled together. Not very complicated at all. And you can see it slides back and forth. And I put a little bit of blue Loctite there. The head on the back sticks up a little bit, but the primers just hit it and flow around. It doesn't cause a problem at all. Okay, so here it is all assembled, assembled here. And the lever couldn't work more simply. They go like that. And if you see, if you come, come in close, you can see here, I had to take a Dremel tool and cut a slot through this side. Has not caused any problems. And that lets you go like that. So now you can come on over here. You can see nothing's going to fall out on you. Push it in, just slide the lever to the left, 
and the parts come down and fill up that little tray. And you can go up and down, up and down, and no problem. And then when you're done at the end of the day, you can just go like that, put it in your plastic tub, put the lid on it, you don't have to worry about humidity affecting it, or the primers falling out of your tray, now that you've got that little door on it. You can see it's all in there and the little door is on it. But, if you still have a problem, look at all these primers still in there. What are you going to do with those? Okay, so the next little tool I made, this is a piece of 1 8 inch diameter bent brass. The longest piece is 2 and a quarter inches long. Looking down at it, 5 eighths. And looking this way, another 7 eighths bend. So let's see if you can see that bend going all the way through there. So you get a 90 degree bend there, and a 90 degree bend there, and then you have your 2 and a quarter inches. And the next part here, I just found an old piece of plat round piece of plastic, drilled a 1 eighth hole in it, and put that in there. And you can see a real simple tool there. Let me get in and focus for you. You can see that's a real simple tool. You just take that piece of brass, put it in the round part there, and you have a nice little handy tool. Okay, where we left off is we have all these primers left in the chute, and we want to get them all back in the, tr the tray there. So you take this little tool, put it in down into here, and raise it up and just bring, bring it up a little bit. Oh, I haven't. Okay, so you just want this just to bounce this a little bit, and there you go. All the primers are back in there, and they're all closed off. Put them in here, put the lid on them, and everything's cleaned up. No primers laying around and no humidity. Okay, what I just got doing, done showing you probably looked incredibly easy. Probably easier than what it should have been, and unfortunately that is the case. There were some additional steps to this. When you take the primer tray here, you can see when this door slides and this door slides back and over. Remember I said I had to cut a Dremel tool out with that little slot right in there. A little slot in there so the door can slide in there. I also found that when I came over here, I had to cut with the Dremel tool just a little bit, half of that U-shape off, so that door would get slid in there, firm, fit in there permanently, firmly. The other thing is, I was reading a rocket book, and they said that one of the things they found with rockets is you have to, to test them the way you're going to fly them, and fly them the way you're going to test them. That's definitely true with this machine. So what I did, you have to do this about ten times. Fill it up. Bring it back up. Close it. Open it back up and make sure they feed correctly. To make a long story short, not only did I have to trim this down here, this piece was too long here. So I had to sand a little bit of that edge off because what was happening is it was leaving a gap there. And the, the primers would come down, bounce around and flip around and go backwards. So you can see all the processes I had to go through to get that to work and be robust. Also, a lot of people on the internet say that there's bits of flashing or leftover plastic in here. Sometimes you have to take this apart. If you take it apart, take maybe a 600 or 800 grit sandpaper, sand the inside out nice and smooth, and then get out the dry powder graphite and lubricate that. It makes a huge difference. Let's the um, Primer slide down there really nicely. With that all being said and done, if you do all of this, it still won't work 100% for you. I had found out one more key critical area, and then I'll put that up in the nice next video that I put up. So thanks for coming and visiting. Have a good day.